Rise, how are you guys doing? How's your week been so far? I wonder how homeschooling's been for you this week, or being in school, I know some of you are still going to school and I hope you're really enjoying that. And I hope that your homeschooling's going well as well. I know we're all missing each other, missing our friends, but I pray that you get to talk to them maybe on the telephone or on Zoom or something like that. I really pray that you've been good at home and helping your parents as well because that's really important because it's quite a difficult time for all the adults too. So this week we're going to be carrying on with our journey through the book of Acts using our book Diary of a Disciple which is the book of Acts told in story form. This week I'm afraid I haven't got any pictures for you but if you watch the Ignite video, I have told the same story using pictures on there. And I've done it in a slightly different way this week. And I'd be really keen to know your thoughts on it and what you think about it. So this week we are going to be reading Acts chapter 14. And this is about Paul and Barnabas and their first missionary journey. That's the first journey they went on to tell people all about Jesus. And this chapter's title is called Poseidia, Attilia and Watchamachilia. You can see there. And we're going to read the whole of this chapter today, if I can turn the page. Here we go. The next town Paul and Barney ended up in was called Iconium. And they did exactly what they'd done in Antioch. They went to the Jewish meeting place and told everyone who would listen about Jesus and loads of those who heard decided to believe for themselves. But even though they were in a new town, there were still plenty of peeve Jews who were soon up to their usual tricks. Paul and Barney had only been there for a few days when they heard that the peeve Jews had start saying all kinds of ridiculous things about them. But this time, Paul and Barney didn't leave. They just stayed even longer and shouted even louder about how awesome Jesus is. And God used them to do some really amazing things. Some people in Iconium loved Paul and Barney and followed them everywhere. But other people believed everything the Jews said and they hatched a sneaky little plan. Some of the Jewish and Gentile leaders who didn't like Paul and Barney decided to corner them and try to throw rocks at them until they couldn't move anymore. Nice. But Paul and Barney heard what they were planning and decided they would have to run away this time. So they went to the next town and then the next town and the one after that. And they kept on telling people all about Jesus. Oh, these pages are really stuck together today. In a place called Lystra, Paul and Barney found a man sitting at the side of the road. His legs were all wonky and didn't work at all. When Paul and Barney sat down next to him and started talking to him, the man stared at them. People usually just ignored him or fell over his legs or told him he was in the way. They certainly didn't sit down and have a chat with him and tell him some truly amazing things. While Paul was speaking to the man with the wonky legs, he looked him right in the face and he could see that the man was really, really wanted to walk. And he saw that the man really believed that Jesus could heal him. So Paul jumped up and said, up you get, on your feet. And the man, who never walked before, jumped right up and started walking around. Whoa! All the people who had been walking past the man every day saw that his legs were working. They saw him walking and jumping up and down. And they thought it was absolutely amazing. Only they didn't quite seem to understand that it was God who had made the man. Well, again understand that it wasn't God who had made the man well again. So they thought that Paul and Barney must be human versions of gods. They started calling Paul and Barney Zeus and they called Paul Hermes. 
Zeus, and it's got a little bit of information here. Zeus and Hermes, what? The people in Lystra believed in lots of different gods. They thought there was a god for everything. Zeus was meant to be a god of thunder and lightning, who was in charge of a bunch of other gods. Hermes was meant to be the god of in-between places, and the people in Lystra thought that Hermes was the one who brought messages from other gods. It was all a bit confusing, and when Paul and Barney talked about one god, the people couldn't quite get their heads around it. Which god did they mean? Hmm. It took a while to get the right idea. People even started bringing cows and flowers and all kinds of things to Paul and Barney as special presents. When Zeus and Hermes, no, I mean Paul and Barney, figured out what was happening, they all went a little bit crazy. They ripped all their clothes and shouted at everyone. We're not gods, we're just Paul and Barney. We're just like you. We came here to tell you about the one true God who loves you, the one who sent his son Jesus to die for you and take away your sins. These gods you believe in, they don't mean anything to the one true God. He's the one who made everything you can see, the one who sends the rain and gives you food. He's the one who makes you happy. But Jesus kept on bringing special presents, oh sorry, but people, whoops, kept on bringing special presents to Paul and Barney and they ended up surrounded by random animals, spiky plants, hundreds of fish biscuits, super posh clothes and more. It didn't last long though, because when the peeved Jews from Iconium and Antioch heard what was going on, they came straight to Lystra and told everyone that Paul and Barney were evil. They weren't gods at all, and what they were saying about this Jesus character, well, that was all lies. They managed to convince everyone in Lystra, and that was when their sneaky stone-throwing plan launched into action. You can see there's some stones being thrown there. Before Paul could escape, the crowds grabbed him and threw big stones at him until he couldn't move any more. They dragged him outside the city. They were pretty sure they'd killed him, and they were feeling rather pleased with themselves. So they just left him lying right there and walked away with smug faces. Mm, show me your smug faces. Mm. Very good. But Paul wasn't dead. And when the Jesus followers found him and prayed for him, he got up and went back into town. In the morning, Paul and Barnabas moved on to the next town, where people were really keen to hear about Jesus and lots of other people chose to follow him. What would you have done next? A. Gone back to Lystra where Paul had rocks thrown at him. B. Gone back to Iconium where the peeved Jews wanted to throw rocks at Paul and Barney. C. Gone back to Antioch where everyone believed the awful things they'd been told about Paul and Barney. Or D. Gone somewhere new. I wonder what you would do. I think I would probably do D and go somewhere new. Well, Paul and Barney decided that first of all, they'd go back to Lystra. They were obviously feeling extra brave that day. After they'd been to Lystra, they went back to Iconium and then they went back to Antioch. Meeting people who wanted to throw rocks at them didn't seem to put them off. In each town they visited, they met up with the Jesus followers and encouraged them to be brave. If people make life difficult for you because you follow Jesus, just keep on believing. God has wonderful things waiting for you, they said. Paul and Barney chose leaders for each church and then spent some time praying for them, asking God to look after them and keep them strong. On their way back to Antioch, Paul and Barney went through some places with some very strange names like Psydia, Perga, Attilia and plenty more whatchamacallit places that I can't even remember how to spell. While they'd been away, the church they'd left behind in Antioch, that's the first Antioch in chapter 11 and at the beginning of chapter 13, not the other one. I didn't realise there were two Antiochs. 
had been praying for Paul and Barney, asking God for help, to help them in all they did. When they got there, Paul and Barney spent ages telling everyone about everything that had happened. All the people they'd met, all the places they'd been, and how many Gentiles now believed in Jesus, and how amazing it all was. And finally, Paul and Barney took a pause for a while. I think they needed time to recover from all their over-exciting adventures. That's the end of that chapter. That's quite a long chapter in this story because the writers made it more fun and more interesting for us, which is really good. And there's lots and lots of things that we could take from this from this chapter. But there's just a couple of things that I just very quickly want to talk about. The first one is about how when Paul and Barney were in Lystra and they healed, they used God's power to heal the man who couldn't walk. The people believed that Paul and Barney were false gods, were idols. And it's really important in our lives that we know who God is, that we know that we worship the one true God, not Zeus, not Hermes or any other false gods. And we can also put other people in our lives and other things in our lives as gods and worship them instead. But it's really important that we keep our eyes focused on Jesus and focused on that one true God. And the second thing I want to talk about very quickly is when Paul and Barnabas had lots of people plotting against them and saying unkind things about them. But they still worshipped God and they knew that God was sending them those things to encourage them. I just want to read this little bit that Paul and Barney said to the believers they said if people make life difficult for you because you follow Jesus just keep on believing and sometimes in our lives people will make life difficult for us because we follow Jesus that might be at school or at home or as your adults and some of your friends um, other people you know they might make life difficult it might be difficult for you or you might have to choose between things because you follow Jesus And that makes your life difficult. But you've got to remember that God is with you and he has wonderful things planned for you. And that's really, really good news. We're going to say a little prayer just to thank God for this story and thank God for these things that we have learned and asked him to help us with that today. Dear Lord, thank you for the journeys that Paul and Barnabas went on. Thank you that they shared your good news in lots and lots of different places. And thank you that you were with them even when people made it difficult for them and made it difficult for the believers. Lord, I pray that you will be with us when things are difficult for us being a Christian or believing in Jesus. I pray that you will be with us when people say things that we know are not true about us. And Lord, I pray that you will help us to remember that you are the one true God, that you are the God we worship, and not to put anything else in our lives above that. I pray that you will be with all of our young people and our children this week as they go about their weeks in lockdown, whether that be at school or at home. And I pray that you will keep them really safe. Amen. Amen. Now... I'm going to organise a Zoom call for next Sunday um, and I will send the details out to your mums and dads and I really do miss you guys and I really hope to be able to see some of you there and I really do miss seeing you so I hope you will take care. Bye bye now, bye.